everybody and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert and today as you can see just to my left there we set up automation for our runic altar so now we can auto craft any rune that we want and we also set up living rock and living wood to be auto crafted as you can see there behind me so I hope you enjoy Okay, so today we are going to attempt to automate our Botania ritual altar now. Well, the runic altar. Since we got this set up running last episode, um, I have done a stream. So that's why all of these are pretty much full because we were able to be on the world to let them fill. I'll have that stream linked down in the description. And because of that stream, we were able to build ourselves a mechanism building. It's very similar in shape to this building, but it's slightly bigger. And if we come inside, it's just made out of black stone. It just, it, I decided just to do this. It's pretty big on the inside and it's almost a perfect square. I think it actually maybe is a perfect square, but I didn't bother to count. So I, the reason why it's this big is because I want to fit everything to do a mechanism in here. So that being all of the metallurgy confusers. And um, speaking of metallurgy confusers, I want to double the efficiency of them. Before, I just have like one for uh, carbon, one for redstone, one for diamond, and one for obsidian. Now we'll want two for carbon, two for redstone, two for diamond, two for obsidian. So that's why this whole wall is spaced out perfectly to be able to fit all of them. So we're going to put two machines beside each other. We'll have an export on the left and right side of them, and we'll have imports and exports across the front of it then as well. Power will come in the bottom, crafting recipes will come in the top. So everything there should be set up correctly to run. And then over in the corner here, after I spaced out each one, there's enough room to fit four enrichment chambers. So we can have one to do carbon, one to do diamonds, one to do redstone, and one to do obsidian. So that's going to be the way that's going to be. Pretty much. So then on this side, I'm thinking of setting up auto crafting for like uh, anything that needs to be enriched, anything that needs to be smelted, anything that needs to be crushed. And I don't know if there's anything else I need, but if we need it, we can put it. There's enough room in here. And hopefully then we'll have enough space in this back corner area here to fit five times ore processing. If we come out the back, since five times ore processing is going to need sulfur, uh, sulfuric acid, Hopefully there's enough room back here to put ourselves two big evaporation towers. One will be doing water to brine and then brine to lithium. Instead of doing it through the system in here, uh, using all this evaporation stuff, by knocking this off, it will save the amount of pressure we're producing. And you can hear it hissing at the moment, but I think that's just an audio glitch because they're actually not like causing any issues. So I think that's just mainly an audio glitch. But yeah, and as you can see, we decorated the area outside. Looks pretty nice. Uh, we were trying on stream to get ourselves a slime spawn egg, but it didn't work. We still couldn't get the slime spawn egg. But uh, literally after I ended streaming, a few sky slimes came over towards me and I killed them. And they dropped the spawn egg. I have only killed maybe like 20 sky slimes, but I've killed hundreds of regular slimes and I got a sky slime spawn egg just when I finished streaming like seriously but one thing I am noticing is they aren't spawning the big slimes it's only spawning small slimes so I even put some skeletons in there to try and help but that's not even enough I, I managed to get myself a ton of extra drigmies on each one so I think there's like about four here four here and I think about eight, six of them here but because of that, they are producing are so many items, which is nice, but we're not producing enough source to run them fully. Even though I have like this whole system here, producing source, filling these jars, it's not enough. And I think it's not even, yeah, look, it's just sending it to each one. But the second it gets consumed, it's gone. Yeah, it, it's not enough. So I'm going to have to come up with a better solution than just this. I thought this would be more than enough. And unless now, like, there's a reason why the big slimes aren't spawning and I can fix that. I tried making the room two blocks bigger just in case it 
didn't read enough room, but you can see it's only spawning the small slimes, which isn't what I wanted. So I don't know what's up with that. Uh, if I have to, there is another uh, one of those source links that consumes food. And source berries are one of the best foods to feed it for the most source. I could set up a huge array of them in the open space over here. So if I set up like a huge pedestal area, hoppering in source berries, and then firing all the source over to here and then spreading it around, we could do that. Like that might be a bit better. I don't know. If you have any ideas or any like suggestions I can use to upgrade my source production in here, please let me know. Anyway, back to Botania. Actually, not back to Botania just yet. Um, the one thing I was struggling with when making the extra Drigmies was not just because these guys take absolutely forever to drop their antlers, which, look, there's another one in here. It's the thief hoods. The hoods were really difficult to get, but we found an easy way of doing it on stream, which was literally just turning our mob farm down here into, like, a slaughterhouse. All we did was get ourselves a pedestal here that has the... Oh, wow, okay, they're loud. That literally just has the atta uh, auto attacker up uh, augment for the pedestal. We have a vacuum hopper or an ender hopper here. That was pretty easy to make. Uh, it's literally just crushing these things under an anvil. Pretty easy. And that's going into an ender chest. On this uh, pedestal, though, there is a sword that we made. If I just pick it up here. Oh, hang on. Uh, auto attack. Okay, let's just do at pedestals. Auto attack and a pedestal here. Hang on, let me just get out of this hole. Uh, grab out my sword here. We made this Manulian sword that's unbreakable and has maximum luck. Um, I didn't really upgrade the damage to it. So it doesn't do that much damage. As you can see, it's quite weak. Um, but it does the job. So what I can do is put this pedestal down here, put this in the offhand, put that on, put the sword in there. Technically, it's supposed to use the sword's um, ability and damage, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. I don't know, but actually, if I just grab one vector plate here to push this guy off. Um, let's go up here. Knock you off and put that there. There we go. Also, if you do set up an auto attacker and you're wondering why it's hitting you, Put a goal, a coal block underneath the pedestal. This will make it not attack players, which is really nice. And here's the slime island where I was just killing some slimes. Literally right there, like right in this water part here is where I got this guy slime. Um, I can ignore that for now. So anyway, now that's enough of that. Let's go straight back to our Botania stuff. So if we have a look over here, Botania... Uh, we have all this set up, and you might notice there is all these lenses on the spreaders. Now, this is to help it, like, send mana everywhere a lot quicker. Because you know we have ourselves our um, Keiko Merlises, and each spreader is not able to keep up with it. But, uh, if you add some of these lenses that I made, it's a potency and velocity. By combining them, I think I mentioned this last episode... By combining them together, you can send mana faster and more mana at a single, like, pulse. So, because of that, I was able to fill these pools up quite quickly. Which is really nice. Um, but there's one issue we are running into, which I didn't think we'd run into this quickly, is we're completely out of the materials now to make cakes. So, like, all the wheat, all the sugar cane has all been consumed. The reason why I have that much sugar right now is because all the honeycomb that I have been storing up, or like the vanilla honeycomb, if you put this into a centrifuge, it does give you sugar. So I've pr pretty much put all of the honeycomb that we had in our system, and I've also made it so it doesn't get sucked out of the system now, all to be like centrifuge to produce us sugar. So until I probably upgrade the Apries to tier 4, it's still not going to be able to keep up. But then again, the, these things will stop eating cake, as you can see, like, they're not eating cake right now, because all the mana pools are full. So it will get to a point where it will reach an equal point where we are starting to produce more ingredients to make cakes than we are consuming. Because right now, we can only, we're consuming more than we're producing, but it's pretty much re reaching the point now where it should turn the opposite. It's just here, we're waiting for these few mana pools here to fill up. They're almost there. So... 
What are we going to be doing here? We're going to be automating this runic altar. We're going to be automating this thing to make us infinite uh, living rock and sun uh, or yeah, living rock and living wood. Now the sunstone, if you have a look here, sunstone needs to be auto crafted in a natural altar. Now this ferment is the only thing we don't have automated yet. So how are we going to automate this thing? I didn't actually think I was going to do this today, but we might as well. How are we going to automate this now? I didn't think about that. Well, for one, we're going to need something to shoot lightning. Now, lightning can come from a couple places. You can use these charge balls or lightning charges, which you can craft using the blitz powder that we're now producing from our bees. Or you can use charged snowballs from power. So, if, like, for instance, this snowball here, if I throw it, it strikes lightning. So we could set up a system producing snowballs using our empowerer um but the snowballs do require quite a bit of power like 500k it doesn't look like much but it does take a bit of time uh, unless we get a huge array of empowers uh, or an energizing rods set up i don't think we'll be doing that pretty soon i do have to set up uh the upstairs area to be just dedicated to power because i think i'm gonna put do power just in the roof or the upstairs of uh, this factory but yeah, that's more or less it for that. Uh, right, let's just get started up by automating this guy first. Since he will probably be the easiest. Because we're going to have to go through a whole other system for this guy. So we'll start off with this guy. One, there's two things uh, that we are kind of running into. But I think I might have those solved due to entangled blocks. Is to autocraft this, you have to put a comparator off of it to read a redstone signal of how much stuff is in here. For instance, if we were to set up, say, let's make ourselves a rune of fire or something here. Um, rune of earth. Let's actually do a rune of earth. So if we truck all this material on, hang on, there, look how fast this goes because I have potency and everything on this now. Done. That was really quick. But as you can see now, there is a redstone signal coming off of this guy. So redstone, if you have a look here, can now go two places. Without that, if we put, get ourselves a living rock here. No living rock. Oh, it's in here. So we put this on. No redstone signal. Okay. So let's just recraft this again. Okay, we don't have everything for it. So let me try a different rune. Let's do a rune of water. Okay, I don't have that either. Let's just do a uh, rune of fire. I don't seem to have one of those. So if we chuck those ingredients on, you can see there's only one redstone but once it completely fills, it outputs more redstone. The reason why we have to use an entangled block is because, well, you can't put a comparator on top of a mana pool. So if I want this thing to have super fast crafting, I have to have it set up like this. So the only way to read the redstone signal from this is by using an entangled block to tell it or to just read what this block is outputting. So because of that, we can actually make the system a little bit cleaner. So we can actually hide this whole redstone thing underground right here. Okay. So if we wanted to, we could just set up a, a separate thing. So if we go to as um, refined, uh, but looks of this, if I wanted to keep this a bit cleaner, I could have done this, but I have to drop the items on. So actually an open crate uh, can go here. So an open crate has to go on top. I could actually bring it a bit higher. I wanted to so an open crate's going to go there okay then if we grab ourselves a crafter we're going to put a crafter uh underground here into a chest so we're going to have a chest here so a diamond chest is going to go back here we're going to have logistical transport pipe okay this is going to go up and pump into this guy okay we come back down underground here find this chest which it should be just right here pump our thing into it if i just rotate this around now that should be the facing up the way uh just break this and see yes it is that's perfect now we can just set this guy here to extract okay now if we grab our entangled block and come down here and actually we need to get our we come along here there's our refined storage cable Okay, so if we just grab our cable here and connect this to that. 
Okay, so this thing's ready. We'll have to fill this guy now up with the crafting recipes, but we'll do that now in a moment. Uh, sounds like a cake's just got made, so the thing is eating again. So down here, this guy needs a redstone signal then as well. So we need to change this guy here to redstone pulse inserts next recipe. Okay, so if what we do here is grab ourselves a link, because it's a little bit awkward, so we'll have to do it the link way. But if we just clear a bit of space down here, okay, I just realized I actually need another two links because we also need a dispenser to be able to fire a wand of the forest, meaning we have to make ourselves a new wand of the forest. So we can just make one of those out of anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, sure, a red one will do. We come up here and we have this here. So we put our dispenser there. We'll put the redstone link on the top here. So that will go like this, okay? And you are going to be set up with frequency of living rock. And you're going to be receiving. If we come down here now, you are also going to be set up to receiving. Is it receiving? Oh, I can't actually see it. I don't want to break the mana pool. Uh, okay, I'm just going to have to hope if I shift right click this, it is set up to the right way. So we'll soon find out. Get our comparator here. Grab out some redstone. Grab ourselves a repeater. Okay, uh, I know this is a bit messy, but I mean, no one's going to see this down here anyway, so it's fine. So we can put this guy here, put the comparator coming off of it here. We'll have the redstone signal. We'll put our two links like this, put the living rock in this in frequency one. Then all we have to do is just get our two redstone and connect it like that. Actually, yeah, okay, now right here is the repeaters. Okay. So that's ready. So you fired, but there's no living rock. So if I put one living rock in here, it drops it on top. Oh, hang on. I see what's happening here. I need to disconnect that there. That drops it on top. If I break this, put it back down. Oh, I never actually put the wand in there. Ah. Now we crafted it. But as you can see, it just got trun out of nowhere. So we need a way to pick up this item now. So the best way to probably do that, I was thinking of using hopper hawks, but it seems to be an actual vacuum thing from thermal series. I was hoping there was a way to uh, filter this guy, but it turns out there is item filters that you can craft. So I'm hoping I can actually open this guy or do I actually have to put him in it first? If we put this guy down, uh, not here, uh, I was hoping just to put it somewhere like right here and then just put an ender chest like here. So if I put this guy here, add this into augmentation, change the item filter, and we're going to say deny list is going to be this. Okay. We could alternatively just say allow only the runes to be crafted, which actually might be better because if we do start auto crafting as uh, Terra Steel and Alf Steel here, it might actually try and pick up those. So maybe we should just change it to an allow list of only the ruins. So now if we chuck down a living rock pretty much here. So if we say put a living rock in here, it gets pulled out, dropped down. This guy doesn't pick it up, which is exactly what we wanted. Say the ruin goes down and OK, I don't want him actually on it. If I just chuck him on top here, he should get picked up and stored in the vacuumulator. Grab an ender chest. I wonder if this thing actually auto eject. It probably does. Oh, no, it doesn't. Put an ender chest right there. Logistical transporter. Right here. And then just say extract. There we go. So that's that whole system here automated. All we have to do now is just go craft all the runes. Now, in terms of this guy, uh, I'm going to have to remove all this and remove all of this. Okay. I know it's a bit annoying to do that, but it has to be done. We need to craft ourselves a stack of constructors and a stack of deconstructors because there's 32 for each. So I need to actually go make more quartz and mixed iron, which is kind of annoying that I don't have any. So quartz and compressed iron. So grab a three, four stacks of that compressed iron. Is it one to one? If it is, then that'd be great. Quartz. Is it one to one? 
It is. Okay, so I can just put that in this chest here and just craft up uh, four stacks of it. Perfect. Uh, I was coming over here to do what now? Crafter patterns. Okay, so patterns. I think I'm actually quite low, so I'm just going to make a few more patterns here. What are these patterns? Sticks and logs. Oak planks, six sticks. What am I doing that for? I can't remember. I'll just make some fresh ones now. Of course, my thing's out of power. I just charged this thing recently. What? Uh, I can't wait to get wireless power. There is wireless power that does work from power, but I don't know if it actually works by charging curio slots. If it does, that's amazing. If not, well then, damn, that's not good. Because you can use the player transmitter. I was reading it in the manual. It charges you in the same dimension if you have the player card. If you want to charge cross-dimensionally, you have to use a different dimension card. I think it's called a card. Yeah, a binding card. And then you got dimensional binding cards. Use a binding card on an Enderman or an Endermite. And you craft it like this. So it's not that terrible now that we have the Enderman farm set up, but it isn't annoying. Back here, I did create more space and organize it a bit better so the wires aren't sticking out everywhere. So I moved the ender chest over here that is exporting out all the crushed uh, stuff, which I think I actually have a bit more crushed stuff to organize out of here now. Hang on. Because I broke the extractors, it's um, reset everything. So I don't know what is or isn't being extracted, but I guess anything that's in here means it isn't being extracted. And this thing, same thing here with the, the chunks. I think I've pretty much got most of the chunks. Uh, dimensional chunks, do I have them down? No, I don't. So I can put those in there too. And how are we doing on the other ore? Yikes, still a ton of ore to go through, which is crazy. Yeah. This guy over here is just extracting everything into the system. Right, perfect. So, in here then. Patterns, got 13 of them. I uh, just need to make a few more. There we go, plenty of patterns now. So, we'll have a look at Rune here. Rune of Air. So we'll start off by crafting this. So we don't need the runic altar in the list. So that there, we just need one living rock. So one living rock in the list here. So all of that in, that will craft us two runes of air. Perfect. Next up then, Rune of Earth. So that's all this stuff here. Um, I don't know if we need any crafting recipes for any of this. So living rock in. Probably just hold on to one. That's all that stuff. The worms, I'm going to have to figure out something to do. Probably set up an automation for them. Basil powder is crafted like that, so we can make that pattern. Next up, then, if we have a look in here, then is everything in here looks fine. Um, Wait, what rune are we using? Rainbow rune. Okay, that's fine. Rune of water. That's this stuff here. Don't need the runic altar. Put that in there. Uh, that's all fine. I just need to tell it how to make the blizz powder. Like that. Rune of water then. A diamond hook is made like that. And the iron hook is made like that. Iron nuggets are made like this. Okay. The only hard part is making this coral stone. It says obtained by placing coral stone next to living coral. Now we probably could automate that in our base right now. All we have to do is just put this stuff down with a constructor and deconstructor. And just... Uh, have it read when it crafts one to break it with silk touch and put it back down uh, next to a living coral but it does take a long time so we could set up a huge automation of it so I might look into doing that later but for now it's okay rune of fire we don't that no so this is the last one here so rune of fire is crafted like this one living rock done so magma bricks is this and made like this and this is made like this and blaze powder is made like that. And I don't think I have blaze rods. Oh, I do have blaze rods. Okay, yeah. Got everything. White candle. Uh, oh, has to be in a cooking pot like that. Um, I'm going to have to set up a different crafting recipe for that later on. Unless I can set up a cooking pot auto crafter down here. I don't think so. I'll move on. So they're the basic runes we need for now. So let's go set those up in the crafter over here. So we actually need to put... Everything that's not the ruin in this crafter here. Ooh, I'm actually out of space now. I need a new crafter. Uh, so let's put a new crafter up here. We'll put a second one here as well. Okay, so we can put the, the blaze powder in here. Perfect. So that's pretty much all of that. Let's head over now to 
our other crafter that we put underground over here. Jump down here, open this crafter, put those patterns in there. And now let's see if we were just to cover over the hole here, go in and look up ruin. We have no runes of, uh, actually we do have a rune of fire. Well, let's actually see if we can craft ourselves 10 runes of fire. Okay, of course we're out of candles. Let's try runes of air. Let's try and craft ourselves 10 of these. So it should set one set of ingredients in. It should slowly pull those items across. This guy isn't picking those items up, which is good. And then it should bring the living rock over and drop it on. Because how fast it goes, it does that. And now I just need to pick this up. There we go. Add it to the filter. Uh, can I drag it from here? No, I can't. Uh, give me out rune of earth and water then as well. So they're crafting. Let's see if it picks it up. It did, and it sent it into the system. Perfect. So this is all completely automated. Eventually, once we upgrade our crafters, we'll be able to add all these extra, like, mythic botany runes and all these guys up here to it. Um, but for now, we necessarily can't. So let's get to work on finishing automating this. It shouldn't be too difficult. We should have enough quartz now. Uh, actually, wait, we might need to make another four sacks. That new made seven with a cable. Aluminium wire we're really low on. And we have no electrum nuggets. Uh, okay, if we look up wire here. Aluminium. Craft me four stacks of it. Go. And that should craft me it automatically, which is amazing. I'm so happy we have automation for that setup. We have plenty of cable now. So we can finish making the stack of these. It's 31. And now we're out of quartz. All right, I guess I just have to go make a bunch of that. Right, there we go. Uh, we had enough quartz finally made, and I've got myself a stack of constructor and a stack of deconstructors. And I've also made myself some network receivers and transmitters, so we can actually start wiring up the network over here now as well to automate this fully. So let's start off by putting, say, which one does what? The constructor uh, reads this one, so it just places it. So yeah, the constructor can go on the bottom here. So we'll just place these all down like this. And don't worry, I will be using my wrench here just to rotate them the face up the way. There we go. So this is Archwood. So if we look up Archwood here, so Flourishing Archwood, uh, we can get this guy. And actually now, I'm going to need more crafters. I'm going to need... Oh god, am I actually going to need 64 crafters? Oh, yeah, I'm anti. Yeah, I, I completely forgot about that. Um... Right, I guess I'm gonna have to go make more of them, but the flourishing archwood is what's gonna go in each one of these. Right, I think that's the bottom one set up now. I have all of the crafting upgrades in it. Now, unfortunately, we won't be able to, like I said, uh, craft the the ferment that is needed for the sunstone, but uh, I think next episode, I think we're gonna look into doing more auto crafting and trying to set up some stuff. So I think what I might do is try and set up automation for ferment using like some sort of lightning crafting automation. And we're going to have to set up some sort of um, growing setup because to make all the living wood, we need this green flourishing arch wood. Now, unfortunately, like we don't have much of it. I have about 500 of it there. So that's not going to really be enough to make more of it. We could either grow it in a botany pot Garden Cloak or Pythogenic Insulator. And I think the Pythogenic Insulator will be the best option for the moment. So if I look into making probably about four to six more of these guys and set up each one of these Archwoods to be crafted in them, I think that will be a good thing. And then that way I can pump all that stuff back into the system and repeat, uh, rinse and repeat. But the only thing is they do require water as well. So I think it's about time we actually look into making this sink. I think we're really close to doing it. Actually, Rune of Man is actually another one I completely forgot to put over there. And we'll have to sort of find out a better way of automating this. So we're going to have to look into doing that now soon as well. So I'm just going to finish putting the rest of these up. So I just need to get more construction cores and put them down like this. And then rotate them and rinse and repeat the exact same that was down below. So let me just do that. Right, I think I just have it finished now. It just turned all that into living wood now. 
So to know if it truly worked, let's actually connect it up now. And we also need to make ourselves a detector. So detector, uh, this guy here. So this is going to read how much is in the system and whether or not this thing should turn on or off. So we're actually just going to, across the back here, uh, just because of the way the cables are, we're just going to actually run two sets of a cable. Uh, so under here, uh, like that, and we're just going to connect the cable there like this. Um, how am I going to connect that? I guess I'm going to have to break in the back right here. Like that. And then come out this way. And I go up. There. That should kind of keep it semi-clean. You can't really tell from the front over here that it is kind of like broken or whatever. But yeah, it's fine. So, the way to know if it definitely is going to work now, we just need to come down here. So, underneath this block here, I'd say. Um... What we can do is put our receiver here, right click with the network card, reconnect those, up those ca cables, like that. Now, if we come over here into our basement, I'm also going to get out a sign now so I know what this one is. Come over here, come downstairs, and let's do at the back right here, okay? What we're going to do is put our transmitter down, so we're going to put that there, get our sign, and just going to call it living wood and living rock the so living wood living rock back here put this back down and we're going to put this detector right here so uh we what we're going to do is say is living rock since we're probably going to be using more rock than wood and uh, so we put the living rock in here say when there is five thousand actually we'll just stick to a thousand for now so when the thing is set up so it emit a signal when on the amount okay this guy here is going to be set up to only work without a redstone signal so you can see it doesn't have a redstone signal so there's no redstone so this thing should be crafting it now so if we come over here it should have broken all of the rock and yep as you can see it has all the arch wood down all of the sunstone down so if i just grab out some glass here just to fill in the front here there we go and this thing is pretty much ready to go i have a race spawn uh thing here so we're actually going to go get ourselves a quick race to put inside the drigmies i should have done that a while ago uh it is daytime so we're gonna have to probably wait till nighttime to do it uh this spirit fire is still going in yeah I, I can put this out i don't okay there we go i was about to say is this never going to go away so Let's see now when it go, gets rid of it. Now, sunstone, I don't think I have that set up as a recipe at the moment. So I'm going to have to get that ready to be crafted in the altar over there. But I just want to see br it break it all and replace it. Perfect. Yep, that's exactly what I wanted. Now, if we have a look in here, we should have about a stack or half a stack of living rock already. Oh, yeah, definitely more than that. So yeah, that thing does about a half a stack of living rock every two minutes, I think it is. The only thing we need to do now in here is look at sunstone. So sun, actually up here, sunstone is crafted like this. And um, does that change the recipe? It does. So I put this in here. So whenever we need sunstone, so if we say we need 64 of it. It will craft a 64 by putting it on the altar and then exporting it out. It should go quite quickly. And you also did mention this thing does only export the crafted materials. So I don't even need to have this filtered. So yeah, I just have it set up just to extract anything that's crafted in there. As you can see, it is slowly processing it all, which is great. This guy is still set up to be processing two runes of air. Why is that? Did I never tell the vacuumulator to extract out of it and pump it into the ender chest? I did. So why didn't it read? So why is it still saying there's one to be crafted? Unless that was the one I tried earlier, uh, but didn't have anything set up and I manually put it into the system. That could be it. Let's just double check now. So rune of air, craft as one, craft, read this guy. So he does everything craft correctly. If this thing disappears, then it works fine. It should be gone any seconds. Surely it's crafted by now, right? Okay, yeah, now it's done. 
All right, perfect. And it is uh, raining, so that's not great. Let me sleep in my hammock. Let's head to the tomb, get ourselves a race, and chuck him in the Drigami farm. I don't think there's anything else I need to do. I think that's pretty much it uh, for this episode, at least. So next episode, then, we are going to start, I think, working on mechanism in that factory. Because once we get all the metallurgic infusers set up, We'll be able to look into making ourselves all of the different uh, circuits. We need another building for all of the solution chambers. So all the industrial foregoing stuff. So I might do that in another stream uh, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. And yeah. Right. Got myself to race. So all I have to do is just chuck them in here. Um, let's get the name tag. Race. Name tag. And let's get out of here now. And so the black zone. And this guy now will be giving us ectoplasm from these guys, hopefully. In the meantime, I think I'm going to have to just figure out how to do the source. So, like I said, if you know anything that I can use to upgrade this thing or make it any better, uh, that would be great. So, I'm going to end it there. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Hope to see you on the next episode. So, without further ado, goodbye.